Uh, the first point I'd like to make to you is that the purpose of fasting is different and the purpose of Ramadan is different. I'll say that again because it's a difficult thing to grasp. The purpose of fasting is something else and the purpose of Ramadan is something else. And Allah decided in His book to tell us the purpose of fasting first. So we're going to think about that without thinking about Ramadan. Usually we kind of mix these things together, yeah? But we're not going to do that today. We're going to separate those two things because Allah Himself separated those two things, okay? So this is our section one. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Those of you who believe, fasting was made mandatory upon you. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ It was made law binding upon you. كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Just as it was on those who came much before you. This ayah is actually talking about the, the institution of fasting before Ramadan. How many days did I say? Just three. Just three. So you're going to fast just like they fasted. So we're starting with the common, not the different one. But interestingly, Allah used the word siyam, not saum. He used the word siyam and not saum. Now for Arabic students, the mustar could be saum and it could be siyam. Sama yasumu sauman, sama yasumu siyaman. But they're not, in the, in, the, in the precise usage of the Qur'an, they're not synonymous. They're not the same. The word Sawm in the Qur'an is used for a special kind of fast that the Israelites used to observe, in which they wouldn't even speak. إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَانِ صَوْمًا And when, the, when you say صَوْمًا, that means فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ النَّاسِ Okay, فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْ سِيَّةِ I'm not going to talk to any human being. Not only was it a fasting of food and drink and intimacy, it was also a fasting of speech itself. That was part of their law. For us, the fasting of speech was loosened. But the Prophet ﷺ made it spiritual advice. In other words, you'll find prophetic traditions telling you that your eyes are also fasting, your tongue is also fasting, your hands are also fasting. But that's not made part of the law. It's not like if you kind of blurted out something in anger, your fast broke. Right? So that was actually the enhance, enhancing the spirit of the fast, but not the legal requirements of the fast. But for the Israelites before us, the fasting was actually much more difficult, and the term for it in the Qur'an is actually sawm. And then the new institution of fasting, what's the term? Siyam. So that's, the, that's the, this, this term that's made specific for the month of Ramadan. But anyway, Ya uh, amanu kutiba alaykum siyam. At least the siyam part of it is the same as what it was. Kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum. As just as it was uh, mandated on those who came much before you. And then Allah tells us the purpose. The purpose is la'allakum tattaqun. So that all of you may develop uh, a sense of protecting yourselves. Caution, care. You know, uh, you can say fear, but fear is really not a good like description of the word taqwa. So I'd like to take a moment to just tell you a little bit about the concept of taqwa. The word taqwa comes from the Arabic word wiqaya. The original word is waqayaqi wiqayatan. And wiqaya in Arabic means to protect. Like waqina adab nar protect us from the punishment of the fire. To protect yourself, you say ittaqa yattaqi. So, فَكَيْفَ تَتَّقُونَ إِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ يَوْمَ يَجْعَلُوا الْبِلْدَانَ شِيدًا How will you protect yourself on the day of judgment if you disbelieve? The day on which a baby's hair turns gray. The idea of protecting yourself. Okay. Now, when somebody protects themselves like they lock the door, or they close the window, you know, or they put the security alarm on, or whatever, they only do that because there's an actual real danger. And that's why, by association, people use the term fear. But it's actually what you do as a result of fear, that's taqwa. Taqwa is not fear itself. Somebody could be afraid and not take any precautions. They don't have taqwa. But somebody who, out of fear, locked the doors, got out of the bad neighborhood, sped up the car, whatever they did, that's an act of taqwa, you understand? So it's actually taking protective measures to secure yourself from any kind of trouble. That's actually what taqwa is, okay? Taqwa can, can have a positive connotation too. It's not just protect yourself against danger, but when you take the proper precautions to not get in trouble with your dad, or with your mom, or with your spouse, or in our case, to not make Allah upset. When you protect yourself from, for example, I'm just, I know that I'm going to fall asleep, so I'm going to finish my homework before I fall asleep. I'll just do it early. Because I, I know I have time right now and I'm feeling lazy, but I know if I delay it to seven, I'm not going to do it. That's an act of taqwa. You protected yourself from your own shortcomings. You took proper precaution. And that's why you'll find even, you know, one of the places in Qur'an, actually in Surah Al-Baqarah, when you're preparing for Hajj. When you prepare for Hajj, you have to have a lot of savings. You have to pack properly, right? And it's going to be back in the day, a really long journey. So you really have to make sure you pack. And you're going to be in the desert. So if you don't have the right supplies, you're going to die. So Allah says, Pack up. 
The best kind of provision you can have is taqwa, meaning take proper precaution. Not just taqwa of Allah, but that's a comprehensive phrase saying, look, be safe. Don't go to like unsavory roads and neighborhoods. Don't talk to strangers. You know, make sure you defend yourself properly. You know, that's actually within the meanings of taqwa. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Because Allah has done something remarkable. Taqwa is something talked about over 200 times in the entire Quran. One of the most, if not the most repeated theme in the Quran is taqwa. And you've heard probably countless khutbahs before you fell asleep. You heard that it's about taqwa. Today, brothers and sisters, I'm going to talk to you about taqwa. You had plenty of those. Everybody says you have to have taqwa, you have to have taqwa, you have to have taqwa, but it's not on sale after the salah, it's outside. I don't know where to get it from. You have this concept, how am I supposed to put it in myself? I've heard that it's really important, and I better have it, right? But it's an abstract thing. That's the beauty of our religion. It takes these ideas, and then Allah will give us in His book a practical way of bringing it inside you. So it doesn't just hover as a philosophical concept. Something called taqwa, I guess some people have it, I don't have it. No, Allah will actually give you training exercises that you can implement and through them get taqwa. And the, one of the most powerful ones of them is what? Fasting. Fasting will give you taqwa. Fasting is hope to give you. Now, if fasting was guaranteed to give you taqwa, here's what you would have read. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لِتَتَّقُوا the lam would have been lam at ta'li. Litattaqu would have meant so that you have taqwa. When you say la'allakum, there's a hope that you might get it, but there's not a guarantee. There's not a guarantee. Okay? So Allah is saying this is a way to get it, but only if you do, you do it right. It's not like anybody who's going to fast is going to get taqwa. So let's explore that concept a little bit. How does fasting lead to taqwa? The idea of being cautious of Allah, protective, secure about Allah. When you're fasting, especially if you're fasting in, a, in an interesting hot place like Texas in the summer, right? Or in the Khalij somewhere, or in Pakistan, or wherever, South Africa. When you're fasting, you're going to feel thirst. And it doesn't matter if you're religious or not, or old or young. This, it doesn't discriminate. Thirst doesn't discriminate. Hunger doesn't discriminate. You're going to feel hunger. And that feeling inside of you is basically your body asking you to disobey Allah. Isn't it? I mean, every ounce of thirst, every second of thirst that you feel, your body is screaming, give me water. Your, your, your stomach is really almost coming up with a song on its own. You know, feed me. There's a war happening inside you. Your body is asking you to rebel against Allah. And there's something in your heart that tells your, your throat and your stomach to shut up. Not until Maghrib. Not until Maghrib. You're fighting yourself the entire day. Yourself, the entire day. There's a newlywed couple. He's crazy about her. He just looks at her and he goes, What am I supposed to do? Not until Maghrib. I'm going to hold myself back because I'm fasting. There, there's the strongest of the urges, intimacy. And of course, the most basic of needs, hunger and thirst. Allah blocked them for the entirety of the day. And you and I, if we're observing our fast, we're literally we're crushing the needs and the strongest desires of our body for the entirety of a day only to make Allah happy only to make Allah happy and you like there's a kid who's like 12 years old or 10 years old he's fasting for the first time and he's looking at this melted piece of chocolate and he's got like a little thing of it on his and he's just looking at it like and he puts it back <laughs> even he's got taqwa and then you're going to do this, you know, every time you do this, you're developing a consciousness of Allah. Why is that exercise important? If you can do that through the entirety of a day to block yourself and deny yourself the most fundamental of your needs and the strongest of your wants. If, you can, if you're capable of doing that, then you're, Allah is asking you for a lot less outside of the fast. He's asking you to actually, يُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثِ The only thing He wants to prevent from you are filthy things you're going to have a much easier time dealing with other acts of obedience of Allah. It's trained you. It's beautiful. You know, I, I put it this way. When, you know, for any tough job, like a rigorous training, like a military training, or police academy training, these kinds of trainings, there's a lot of tough exercise, yeah? And they go through hours and hours of regiments and trainings. And then that same guy decides to join some kind of light gym. And they have a workout routine. And he says, this is a joke. 
We used to do 10 times this much. Yeah? So when he's come through a much tougher training, anything less is piece of cake, effortless. That's the idea of fasting. It's so tough. So when you're done with this, what Allah is going to ask you after that is piece of cake. You're ready for it. You'll develop the consciousness of, consciousness of Allah and you'll be much better able to protect yourself from disobeying Allah. Now look at the beautiful words. Ayyama ma'dudat. Days that are very, very limited in number. The words ma'dudat with the alif and ta suggest what's called in Arabic jam'u qilla. Less than 10. How many days did I say they were? That's why we're learning that these are the, these are the three. And you can call out in this audience. It's okay. The people around the world can hear you. It's fine. Inshallah. But I, I need to, when I ask you a rhetorical question, call it out. And those of you that are watching online, get weird and speak to the phone or the, the iPad or whatever you're watching on, inshallah. It's okay. So there were only three days of fasting, yeah? So Allah says just a limited number of days. So this is pre-Ramadan discussion. This has nothing to do with Ramadan. All, all Allah is describing is fasting itself. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنَ يَامٍ أُخَرٍ And whoever among you had been sick, or whoever among you had been traveling, then they can make up in other days. One way to make up for the fast, if you missed a fast because you were sick or travel, is that you can just make up another day. Yeah? That's option one. وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةٌ And those who are capable to do so, they can actually give an expiation, meaning a compensation. You can say you, you can pay a fine. Okay, pay a pay penalty for missing a fast. So this is option number two. I need you to remember these two options. The first option is, you can make it up. The second option is, you can, you can pay a fine. And what's that fine? Allah will explain Himself, ta'amu miskin. The food of a person who can't help himself. Miskin is someone who's stuck in a situation and can't help themselves. The beauty of this phrase, uh, often missed in translation, Allah did not say, ta'amu miskin. Ta'amu miskin would have been translated, feeding of the poor. Feeding of the poor. But ta'am cannot be translated as feeding. It can only be translated as food. Ta'am and ta'am are worlds apart. Now when you say feeding, like feeding of the poor, then you did something out of your way. But when you say food of the poor, it actually means the food belonged to them. It was theirs to begin with. You understand? In it there's a hint that fast or no fast, give the poor what they deserve. It's theirs to begin with. You're not going out of your way to do them a favor. Right? So in any way, in any case, وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُنَهُ فِدْيَةٌ طَعَامُ مِسْكِينَ فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ And then Allah goes on, on His own and says, and whoever wants to volunteer out of goodness, then it's better for them. Meaning volunteer, meaning, meaning make up the fast and give someone, you know, give someone food. Good for them. وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ And if you were to fast to begin with, in other words, not miss, it's better for you. وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ in kuntum ta'lamun, some have also interpreted this. Yes, you can give voluntarily to somebody, but the, the better of the two options is make it up. Make it up, right? So, وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ In kuntum ta'lamun, if in fact you've known. Now, what we've learned thus far is this is what we had in common with the people that came before us. This is the fasting that was in common, and there was two ways of getting out of a fast that you missed. I, I asked you to remember both of those, making it up or, or the, the, the meal of a poor person, yeah?